Hello everyone and welcome to the Q&A. For those of you that don't know, this is a celebration for 500 subscribers. I put out a video about six days ago and I was really happy to see how many people asked questions. The first question is, what do you see yourself doing in 10 years time and do you think chemistry will play a part in the future career of yours? In 10 years, I see myself finishing up a PhD in organic chemistry. Um, exactly what I want to do as a PhD chemist, I'm not sure yet. I know that I'll continue to pursue chemistry as a hobby because it's so fun and I have much more freedom in my own lab compared to a professional one. Question number two is, who is your favorite chemist or scientist? Well, my favorite chemist would have to be Friedrich Wohler. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he was a German chemist who synthesized urea from inorganic chemicals. He basically started exploration of organic chemistry by disproving the idea at the time that organic chemicals are fundamentally different than inorganic ones, and that they had to come from living things. On a scale from 1 to 10, how cool is Joe from AP Chem? Well, Joe, on a coolness scale of 1 to 10, you are definitely a 12. What software do you use to edit? I use Windows Movie Maker, and I've used it for pretty much all of my YouTube videos, except for a couple which I used iMovie. It works well enough for now. I've looked into different software, but I really haven't liked any of the free ones that much, and I'm kind of broke, so I'm not going to pay for one. How much money would it take to start up a minimal home lab, just the glassware? Well, about three years ago, I started my lab, and at the time, I spent about $150 on equipment. This was enough to get me a cheap hot plate, an alcohol burner, test tubes, beakers, Erlenmeyer flasks, graduated cylinders, some funnels, a mortar and pestle, some crucibles, rubber stoppers, hand tools, and probably some other stuff that I'm forgetting. From there on, it, I just slowly bought more and more equipment, and that's really what you have to do. You can't really buy everything at once because it just costs too much, unless you're rich, which just go ahead. Um, to date, I've spent about $2,500 total on all of my lab equipment. Want some fennel isocyanide? Uh, thanks for the offer, but my lab is in the house, and I don't think my family will appreciate the odor. A celebrity asked this one, so thanks for that. Uh, what is your favorite element? My favorite element is probably phosphorus. Uh, that's mostly because you can make phosphorus chlorides from it, and I really want some, but I can't get any. And also, white phosphorus is super reactive, and who doesn't love explosions and fire? Unfortunately, my favorite three-letter agency has made it very difficult to acquire phosphorus in the U.S. Do you have any chemistry books or online resources you'd recommend reading for someone interested in the subject? Well, my all-time favorite chemistry book is definitely Vogel's Textbook of Practical Organic Chemistry. Um, I've read on Science Madness that they have the third edition there, but I can't find it. I personally have a hard copy of the fifth edition, and it's the best purchase I ever made. A good inorganic resource is Brower's Handbook of Preparative Inorganic Chemistry, and I have a PDF version that I got on Science Madness. Some helpful websites that you can find are sciencemadness.org, of course, prepchem.com, orgsyn.org, and olin.net slash science. What is your favorite reaction and why? My favorite reaction would have to be making salicylic acid from aspirin. I know it's kind of simple, but it was the first organic reaction I ever did. For this reason, it holds a pretty special place in my heart. I've done it probably 10 times now. It's easy and never fails, unlike most of the stuff I do these days. What is your least favorite reaction or the scariest reaction slash moment you ever found yourself in the middle of? My least favorite reaction was pretty recent. I was trying to do a variant of the Claisen condensation involving ethyl benzoate. 
I had really high hopes, but when I added the ester to the reaction mixture, it just solidified completely in a few seconds. It was in a 1420 flask, so I couldn't really mix it, which was important. So the whole thing turned into a red-orange thing and was a mess. I'm not disclosing all the details because I'm still working on it, and I think it'll be cool. I've never really been scared for my safety in the lab, but the scariest moment was during a filtration when the filtrate foamed up in the flask and went into the vacuum line. I should have used a trap, but I didn't, so I was rushing to unhook the line from my vacuum pump, and that was really scary. Do you speak German? No, I don't speak German. I like German, and I would love to learn it, but I'm already learning French in school, and for now, two languages is enough for me. What are your views regarding my channel? How is the content, and what changes should I make? Uh, this was from Akil the Chemist, by the way. He is currently trying to gain more subscribers, so I'll put his link in the description here if you want to check him out. Um, I like your channel. Um, my favorite videos to watch are usually preparations of chemicals, and I think you should make more videos like that, like your last one. Got any plans for the future? I always have lots of plans, but unfortunately I get sidetracked easily. Right now my biggest project is making this compound here, Remesemide, I really don't know how to pronounce that. It was an experimental drug for Huntington's disease, among other things. I'm doing a project on Huntington's as part of a program at a local research institute, and I think making a drug would make for a great project. In the future, some acyl chlorides from OTC products might be coming up as well. Where do you get your chemicals or glassware? I get pretty much everything online. eBay is my favorite site and I order there mostly for chemicals and glassware. On eBay, if you search hard and long enough, you'll pretty much find anything. I'm starting to like a company High Media on Amazon for getting chemicals from. They have some stuff that's hard to get and good prices too. Their products are on eBay as well, but they are usually a little bit cheaper on Amazon. I've ordered a couple of times from Duda Diesel for larger amounts of chemicals. And other than that, it's just searching through products at the store and reading the ingredients label. I love the hardware store. And the final question, what's the most dangerous chemical you've ever had or made? I guess potassium cyanide, although cyanides aren't as bad as most people think. It's a solid, it's not like it's going to jump out and get you. The lethal dose is low enough to be concerned, but it's not low enough that you'll accidentally eat that much. That being said, I can't recommend playing around with the cyanides. The biggest danger is from accidentally forming hydrogen cyanide. HCN is much more dangerous than something like chlorine, even though chlorine's IDLH is five times lower, because it's hard to detect. Breathing dangerous levels of chlorine is painful, but lethal levels of hydrogen cyanide aren't irritating. I'd like to thank everyone again for asking so many questions. Um, as always, I read all of my comments, and I remember to respond to almost all of them. So if you have any other questions, ask away. Thank you.